Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Electrical Concepts. My name is Avigan Roy. So in this video lecture, we are going to dis discuss about two important terms that are used in electrical engineering, especially in power system production. And these are called breaking capacity and making capacity. First, we will discuss about uh, their definition, how uh, these things are important uh, in power system protection. Why is it required to determine uh, these two capacities? Okay, and we will also see the difference between them. Okay, so without wasting any time, let's get started. So today we are going to discuss on making capacity and breaking capacity. Okay. So as you can see the first point, fault current can be divided into two components, a steady sinusoidal component and an exponentially decaying transient component. So always whenever fault happens, that fault current can be divided into two components. Okay. As you can see in this figure, here this is the fault current and it has two components. One is a steady sinusoidal component and one is exponentially decaying transient component. This blue dotted line uh, represents this exponentially decaying transient component. And as you can see, due to the presence of this decaying component, the fault current becomes asymmetrical in nature. Okay, but as the time goes on, this component uh, gets reduced and after some time this fall current again becomes symmetrical okay so now what is breaking capacity breaking capacity is the rms current which a circuit breaker is capable of breaking under specified condition okay so whenever fault happens that circuit breaker has to disconnect uh, the the path all right so breaking capacity means uh, it shows that RMS value of the fault current which the circuit breaker is capable of breaking all right under specified condition specified means at a particular recovery voltage at a particular restriking voltage okay this recovery vol voltage or restriking voltage these things I have already discussed in my previous video lecture all right so now as you can see here AB is the instant of contact separation okay suppose the fault current uh, has been sensed by the relay so now the circuit breaker will try to separate the contacts all right so ab is the time instant at which the circuit breaker contacts are separated all right now there are two types of breaking capacity actually breaking capacity and breaking current are bo both of them are same they are used interchangeably so as I have already said that fault current can be divided into two parts. One is a steady component and one is a transient decaying component. So in absence of this transient decaying component, the fault current becomes symmetrical. So symmetrical breaking current is nothing but x by root 2. Here as you can see x is the maximum value. So it is the RMS that means x by root 2. But in presence of this decaying component, it becomes asymmetrical in nature. That is why in case of asymmetrical breaking current, we actually considered individual RMS values and the overall RMS value becomes this under root x by root 2 whole square plus y square. What is y? y is that value or it is the value of that decaying transient component at the instant of contact separation. Okay, so this is the asymmetrical breaking current. Breaking capacity is always expressed in MVA. Actually, that breaking current is multiplied with the rated voltage and we express this in terms of MVA. Alright. So, this is called the breaking capacity. This is the concept of breaking capacity. Now, let us discuss what is making capacity. So, before understanding making capacity, uh, one point should be clear and that is there is always a chance of auto closure of circuit breaker even under fault condition. See, the circuit breaker has that facility of auto closing. Okay, whenever fault happens, the circuit breaker disconnects the path. Okay, so after some time, the circuit breaker again tries to close the path. Okay, or you, we, you can say the circuit breaker tries to uh, uh, make the circuit closed. Okay, so it is actually trying to make the contact so from there the concept of making capacity comes into existence and that is why it is important to analyze okay so making capacity 
okay one more thing i have uh, forgot to mention so this auto closer may be done even under fault condition okay circuit breaker after closing uh, after disconnecting the path circuit breaker waits for some time and again it tries to auto close the path but there is a chance that fault is not yet cleared fault is still there so there is a chance that auto closing is done at even under fault condition all right that is why making capacity is important to be analyzed so it is nothing but the peak current after the closure of circuit breaker okay and it also includes the dc component of the fault current so it gives the maximum value or the peak value of the fault current af just after the closure of circuit breaker okay now next point is very important the sudden thrust of electromagnetic force depends on the peak value actually you may ask that why is it peak because in braking capacity we consider rms or in normally in ac system we consider the rms values but here actually why the reason of choosing this peak value as the making capacity is the sudden thrust of electromagnetic force that means whenever the circuit breaker tries to make the contacts or make the circuit closed okay even under fault condition what will happen that circuit breaker is going to face a huge thrust of electromagnetic force because fault is still present over there so even under fault condition it is trying to close the path so a huge electromagnetic force is going to be applied on these two contacts right so this sudden thrust or this sudden force depends on the peak value and based upon that that circuit breaker design is done actually okay so based upon this peak values the design of circuit breaker is achieved that is why always the peak current is considered uh, to find the making capacity of a particular circuit breaker so what is the formula of making capacity so this is the formula see first you need to multiply the symmetrical braking capacity with under root 2 symmetrical braking capacity means x by root 2 so multiplied this with root 2 gives you x that means the maximum value of this in uh, fault current and this this x actually denotes the maximum value of the symmetrical component or the symmetrical fault current but here as you have uh, seen it includes the dc component as well that means here you need to multiply that entire term that means you need to multiply this x with 1.8 now there is a reason behind uh, this thing why is it 1.8 okay so for that one concept comes that is called doubling effect actually these things are very vast and all things are interrelated okay so it is very tough to uh, cover all the topics in a single video so see doubling effect means see uh, at the very beginning i said that fault current can be divided into two components right one is the steady component and one is the transient decaying component so the transient decaying component actually depends on the instant or the time instant at which the circuit breaker has closed the path okay so that magnitude of the decaying component or that uh, transient exponential component depends on the time instant at which circuit breaker is closed all right so depending on upon that the magnitude varies so in worst case it has been found that uh, in worst case that uh, entire fault current becomes almost twice the maximum value of the symmetrical fault current okay the maximum value of symmetrical fault current that means x all right and that is why 1.8 is included here that means it is uh, almost equal to 2 that is why it is called doubling effect okay so we always has to have to consider the worst case scenario so that is why uh, here 1.8 is multiplied uh, just to take that thing into consideration if you multiply these two terms 1.8 and under root 2 you will get 2.55 so we can say that making capacity is 2.55 times higher than the symmetrical braking capacity all right okay so i hope you have understood both making and braking capacity all right so i hope you have enjoyed this video you have got an idea of what is braking capacity and what is making capacity all right so if you have liked this video 
please share with your friends and also comment all right and don't forget to subscribe and in next video lecture i will come up with some more interesting concepts of electrical engineering till then goodbye